Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast. We come to you the beginning of each month where we talk about products that we do, uh, news in the industry, and uh, just anything that we think you might be interested in. You can hear us on Spotify, Amazon Music. We can be seen on video on YouTube. Uh, or just find us wherever you normally get your podcasts from. Welcome to A Word From The Wise, our podcast from Soul Wise. I'm Louise Barrett, with me Daniel Coombs this week. We're going to do things a little bit different this week. We've, uh, had, as we head into the summer season, we've had a fair few people ringing and asking about mounting of antennas on their vans. Mm. So uh, Sarah, who produces the podcast, has done a list of questions for us that she'd like us to answer. So we'll start off and we'll just go through the list as she's done it. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Because you're kind of going to get blindsided because I don't know if you've actually seen these questions, but we'll I'll, go I'll, with I've glanced at them. Glanced at them. <laughs> All right then. So firstly, she asks about fixed antennas, such as the Puck and the Mimo, and how they are permanently mounted to your motorhome. But you don't have to permanently mount them, do you? So it's, whilst it's a good question, be, yeah. it doesn't, it's, there are multiple ways. So if you're watching the video, then we'll show you the mounting brackets. And if you're listening, what we will do is we will describe them. But if you're not sure, it might actually on this occasion be worth coming and having a look at the video. So if we start with the Mimo, which is this mm. big chunk of a beast, that's the sort that you would maybe put on a larger motorhome. Um, and this yeah, it that, has a bracket underneath that comes off. That, that's the most powerful of the uh, This one, This particular one is the Mimo 15, but there is the Mimo 12, there's the Mimo 17. Yeah, so, they're, all, they're all the same in terms of So mounting. this would Just actually be different with more out. cables, <laughs> yeah. So that would then depend on how much of a hole you have to drill in the top of your unit though, wouldn't it? Right, yeah. yeah. So that comes with, this is the one you probably would drill a hole, isn't it? Because this one doesn't come with any brackets yeah. with regards uh, it, mounting it on yeah, the side. Yeah, it's merely designed to be mounted on its on its spigot mount. Um, that, that's the intended thing. It, it does have other options like a magnetic base. Um, does it come with magnetic base? It doesn't base? come with that. You have, that's a separate item. So that's item, an extra we, item. We do that as well, yeah. Okay. It's designed specifically to fit onto it. But, but this antenna, it's kind of designed to be the kind of antenna that you'd mount up on your vehicle full time, basically. Um, that's the idea of it. It's, it's designed to be a vehicle mounted antenna. Um, so it's... So it comes with, it comes with this long piece of white plastic here, which yeah. is a K, uh, is the, the spigot, the spigot, the threaded thread, spigot. Yeah. Um, it comes with cable clips as well, so you can keep that all tidy. Yeah. Um, comes with extenders as well if you need them. We do have a, an extension bracket thing, don't we, of the spigot yep. as well. Um, as you say, you can get the magnets for it as well. Um, so yeah, it just, that's one you would normally drill your van, boat, whatever it is, mm. and then just plonk it on the top, cable through first. But so you'd have to be really confident, I think, that you weren't gonna mess it up. I don't yeah. think I could do that. <laughs> if I bought a 60 grand motorhome, would you want to drill a hole? <laughs> but there will be people out there that do it for you, wouldn't there, I'm sure. Yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah. So. so that one's quite straightforward, really. Drill a hole, pop the cables through. This will then go back up, the twisty bit. It's got the spigoty thing so that it sits in. And then this seals then, doesn't it? So it, that comes off. It, it, it's got like a. I it's got a seal. It's a waterproof called? seal on the it's bottom. Like a, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, it's the same shape as the bottom, but it's it, it's got a bit that comes off, so it actually is sticky. Yeah. So you could you stick it to the antenna and stick it to your van, and then I guess if I were doing this, I'd probably put some silicon sealant on there or some or some you sort of a sealant. Well, yeah. yeah, just to keep that in place. So that's the Mimo, that one's quite straightforward, isn't it? So, oops, dropped the water now as well, look. So the Mimo, and it comes with all the instructions, uh, tells you what's what's included. It gives you um, a whole bunch of ideas as well. 
uh, and it also suggests some safety things that you might need. You might need some mask intake, goggles and a drill and so on. Mm. Yeah, pointing on their, their own YouTube channel have some good mounting guides basically where they show themselves mounting it to mud terms and that kind of thing. So that can be useful if, if you think you need a, a good visual reference of how it's done. I think that's probably a good idea as well, isn't it? Because even when we loan these things out to the YouTubers and influencers and people that review them, they don't generally drill a motorhome to do the reviews, do they? So that's I think good. seeing it done properly in a pointing video may well be quite a good one. What we'll do is we'll link to that in the, um, the description, description underneath. So we'll sort that out as well. So the next one then would be the puck antenna, which is a similar sort of thing when it comes to mounting obviously much smaller so it's a much smaller hole you drill in but also this one if I recall you don't actually have to drill a hole for this one you can mount it the, yeah the, the puck is good because it's really versatile in terms of its mounting it comes with I think five or six different mounting options um, yeah so it's it's got a kind of spigot in the same vein as what you've got on the Mima just a bit smaller and a bit easier to find room for but it also comes with double-sided surface mount tape. It comes with its own mag mount without needing to be purchased separately. It can be mounted on a wall or pole if it was, perhaps you'd do that if it was going to be temporary. Um, Shall we get out the um, the wall mount? Because that might that's be one of, it's one of the bits. It's this <laughs> plus the, oh, there we go, it's that one. So it's like a, an L-shaped brackety thing. Oh, no, mm. it. Yeah, it looks like from the instructions. You can tell we don't do this here. sort of thing, can you? So we're like you in, in reality, is that we just do it. Um, is it we're kind of, yeah, going from the instructions in the same way you would. So yeah, that's a wall or a pole mount one. Yeah. So so this is, if you wanted something that. Uh, that you're thinking in down the line you might want to drill a hole in a different van that uh, but you only want it as a temporary mount this time you could do that or you could just temporary mount it couldn't you yeah but it, it's designed to be very easy to mount permanently or temporarily it's it's a very uh a very neat bit of kit i suppose well it's actually quite to... small when you think about well, it if you yeah, think exactly, that fits yeah. in the palm of two hands maybe but uh, yeah, so it's actually quite a small unit, that one, isn't it? And again, this is one where, uh, this is the Puck 2, so it's only got the two antenna um, connectors at the bottom, but I've got a Puck 5 and a Puck 7 as well. And there's actually a Wi-Fi one of this as well. So we've got the Puck 12, which is uh, the Wi-Fi one. Dead easy, that's what we're thinking, isn't it? Mm. So they're the ones that are normal roof mount antennas for going generally on top of your motorhome, your caravan, that's and then the you can leave them in place even when you're traveling. So that's the whole point of those. Then you've got the X pole antennas, which are not designed to be left in situ when you're traveling. Um, so these ones can be wall or pole mounted, and there's even suction cups for these, isn't there? Yeah, so you can just stick them on a window and then run the cable through the window or, or however we would do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this isn't a vehicle mount antenna. It's meant to be on a static installation. So um, So you can put you, it on your vehicle, can't you? You, put you it just on your need vehicle, to bring it in whilst you're you travelling. Take it down and put it back up again when you move from place to place. Um, obviously it could get blown off. Yeah, <laughs> if perhaps if it's a bit, bit windy, you maybe won't want to leave it outside on suction cups. No, you definitely really. not. But, um, but you could have that on a pole. Some of, or uh, some motorhomes would have a TV pole, so you could mount it on that, couldn't you? TV antenna pole. Um, or I've seen some that have got ladders on the back, so you could mount it on the ladder as well. So that comes with uh, comes with a Jubilee clip and it and the suction cups that we mentioned earlier as well, all included in that. And it does come with screws as well. So at the back here you could screw that on if you had a if you wanted to permanently mount it at home on an outside i don't know bar or something like that couldn't yeah, you yeah so on the outside of your house multi-purpose really isn't it so it's not just for people that are out on the road in their vehicles or their motorhomes boats and the like you could permanently mount it on your shed or somewhere in your garden for uh, that sort of use 
Or if you have got a little business, you could just put it in the yard. You know, if you were a truck business or something and you've got a yard, you could run it out there, use that sort of thing. Just making it up as we go along now. But again, <laughs> this one also comes with all the instructions, uh, tells you what you're gonna need, tells you everything that it comes with, suctions, uh, the suction cups, the or they call it a pipe clamp. I think we call it a Jubilee clamp here though, don't we? Yeah. Uh, and screws and so on. So that's that one. So that's all the 4G and 5G type antennas. Yeah. Um, so the next question we've asked quite a lot recently is the benefits and the disadvantages of fixed versus not fixed. I think there isn't such a thing as a benefit or a disadvantage. Yeah, Surely that depends what you need. Yeah, there isn't an inherent difference in the like performance of an antenna that can be mounted permanently or non-permanently. It just comes down to your specific needs if you want to have it permanently mounted then that's an option or if you want a temporary one then that's also an option and there isn't any going to be any difference due to that if there is any difference it's down to the obviously the individual qualities of the antennas indeed so there's no performance differences is there not really? not due to that reason mm. no. although you, you say that if you've got something like the x pole and you can get it on a higher um, pole somewhere if you're you know if you go to a showground or something and you put it on a higher pole you're gonna have some benefit there aren't you because it should see a longer yeah. reach but i mean i give it a bit of a stretch isn't it really as a as a benefit but it it is what it is yeah. i suppose it's, um and i suppose the other thing is is if you've drilled a hole in your van that's there to stay isn't it so if you are gonna sell it you're gonna sell it with the antenna or at least a antenna of some description. <laughs> yeah, room to put an antenna in. Indeed, yeah. The next one that we've been asked a lot of, is it better to get a two by two antenna or a four by four and what's the difference? Um, I think a good way to sum up the difference is a two by two antenna can be sort of thought of as two antennas built into one and a four by four antenna can be thought of as four antennas built into one. Um, so the 2x2 two two will have two cables coming out of it, or at least two cable connections, and the 4x4 four four will have four. Um, and the difference is roughly that the 4x4 four four will have about twice the total throughput performance of the 2x2, two two because it's four streams of data rather than two streams of data. But you don't always need a 4x4 four four because obviously the fact that it's got four connections that's only useful if your router has four connections. So it matters if your router is two by two or four by four. So you start with your router and then decide from there. Yeah, well. yeah. For four by four, generally, that's going to be very high performance. You you probably wouldn't necessarily need that on a motorhome if you're going to be in mostly rural areas because the what's available there in terms of signal might not be enough to take advantage of having a four by four throughput um, it still could be good to get especially for future proofing and because a lot of 4x4 routers are also 5g so that's something to think about i know every every 4x4 antenna will be 5g basically yeah nowadays at least out of all the ones we do they are okay should i get an omnidirectional or a directional antenna in 99 percent of circumstances I'd usually recommend omnidirectional when it's going on like a motor home or camper van or something it's going to be basically 100% of the time you'll want an omnidirectional because with a directional antenna it only works reliably if it's being pointed directly at a source so a, a 4G mast 5G mast and it really also wants to have a clear line of sight and obviously if you're going to be driving around using it while moving or even if you're taking it down and putting it back up again when you're at a location, you, you're just very unlikely to have a good line of sight to a mobile mast at any time. It just can't be guaranteed at all. So an omnidirectional antenna will work about the same level, regardless of if it can see a mast or not, and how close it is to a mast. Because it looks for it, doesn't it, really? Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's 360 degrees yeah. all around it, and you can pick up the signal as it bounces off. Yeah. The environment whereas the directional antenna it's just too narrow too precise it won't reliably pick stuff up yeah so you you really need to know where you're looking for the cell tower if you go for the directional but yeah 
uh, as and you say you, you would need to be rotating it as you were driving around a curved road it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most people take omnis don't they yeah. for, for if they're on the move that's for sure so the next question that Sarah's given us is what router should I get and which router works best with the antenna? So the answer to that is Teltonica, isn't it? So yeah, we do. that's that, we're done there. We yeah. do a lot of Teltonica <laughs> routers. Uh, generally, you'd be looking at something like the RUT241 or maybe the RUT956 if you want some of the uh, machine to machine capabilities of that with different things you can plug into it. We've got the TCR100 now as well. That's come through recently, yeah, hasn't that, it? That's... So that's that's been quite a good addition to the yeah, it's done quite well to the uh, thing because it's it's a low cost but cat six if i remember rightly yeah that's right so it's uh, so it's quite a low cost but quite high spec router yeah. in this sort of area so i think that's uh, quite a good one um now we would say buy a teltonica one but you can use them with other other router brands can't yeah, you they're, so not, they're you, not locked to yeah they're not locked to them so you could have a Huawei one or a TP Link or whatever, couldn't you? Yeah, lots of people do that as well. Yeah. But yeah, to be fair, we sell more antennas than we do routers, don't we? So so they must be being used for something else. Yeah. Uh, so there are the different price ranges. So we're being asked here about to talk about the different price brackets, but it's you don't really it's it's kind of you you don't really need a wickedly expensive router do you, to get this to work. You can Something like the 241, the TCR100, the 950 will do for the vast majority of yeah, people I that think, are using or the 956 as it is now. Yeah, you? I think as an example of a 241, I think it's about £160 now, something like that. Yeah. And yeah, and then if you went to go up to like the TCR100, that's about £190. The RUT950 is about to about £220, I think. Yeah. So it's somewhere around that price range i would say is mostly what you would need for a motorhome type scenario and if you're not sure just give us a ring we'll talk to you we're quite happy with that aren't we pop us an email know. across <laughs> yeah um so the next someone's asked do i really need an outdoor antenna will my router not work well enough without one um it will work probably to a sufficient extent to be usable but because it's in a motorhome with obviously the metal exterior, that's a very difficult material for mobile and wireless signals to pass through, to penetrate through. Um, and so it will always have a big impact on the performance and limit your maximum potential. Uh, an external antenna, even if it's not necessarily a super powerful high dB one, just the fact that it's external and it's on the outside that gives it a big advantage in being able to pick up the signal before it's diminished by having to pass through the metal. So it will pretty much always lead to a, at least a somewhat noticeable performance impact. And that's the same even if you were using it at like a garden pub or something in, in your own home, isn't it? It's, yeah. it, it's, it's it, like it's just, it's, you just get a little bit more by having the outdoor antenna. It just, just makes yeah, that bit of difference. In pretty much all cases, you know, it's yeah. at least good. Yeah. Um, and then someone's asked about the SIM cards. So really, I suppose the answer is you need a data SIM card, don't you? you want a data SIM card, not a regular mobile phone SIM, because you end up paying, with them you pay for some data that you don't use, and they tend to not work as well because they, they get throttled down, basically, uh, the operators. Um, so it just makes a lot more sense in every way to go for a data only sim and they can tell as well can't they we did yeah, have exactly. a customer didn't we that uh, used a telephone sim and then got chopped off and was wondering why it stopped working all of a sudden it's because the cell company had said well you're using a phone sim in a router so we've stopped it working yeah so yeah a data sim all the way yeah and it can be any sim operator so it's not locked to any one yeah like ee or vodafone you can use any and the SIM goes in the router, not in the antenna. So yeah. the antenna is, is, is irrelevant to that. So I think we've covered everything that uh, people have asked about on the 4 and 5G. That's the common question, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've had similar questions on Wi-Fi as well. So we do the Patriot, which a lot of people quite like to take. So if you're... 4 and 5G is quite good for the off-grid people. If you're not staying on a campsite, good if you're staying on a campsite as well. But if you are staying on a campsite or a caravan park, 
and they've got free Wi-Fi, for instance, then the Patriot might be a good option. Or paid Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, yeah, some, they will sometimes <laughs> will make you pay, won't they? And what this does is that mounts onto the outside of your uh, caravan or motorhome, and it's uh, this is a Solwise patented bracket yeah. um, in your high quality stainless steel uh, and they are even engraved with Solwai so that you know that it's the genuine article and essentially what you do is you take the bottom of the Patriot off and oh, screw that yeah 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 you call it a lid dear when oh, it's at it the bottom does that know. count yeah. yeah and then that slots in the top she says Anyway, it slots in the top. You put your cable, your USB cable in. I suspect what I've got here is I've got the Patriot bracket for the other Patriot that we do because we've got two yeah, bracket have, types. So make sure you buy the with right different, one. Similar names. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, this came out of the, the actual kit box, so that should fit on there, really. Maybe it's just a bit stiff. There we go, it's on now. So you put that in, it's got the USB connector is in the bottom so you put your cable in and then you plug that all back in you get the drift anyway do it all up and then with the rest of the kit you get some suction cups to suction the bracket onto your unit now there are pictures on the Patriot page on um, my friend's motorhome and some of the older pictures are on my own motorhome and uh, so they that just goes on but that's not a permanent mount is it that's a that, come yeah, off when you're yeah you, you would still want to take that down when you're traveling and then put it back up again when you're stationary you um, could screw it on but again I, yeah, I, I, it, I, com it comes with it could just come with screws well. so it comes with uh, again like we did before it's got a jubilee clip uh, and it also comes with a saddle bracket so you could again put it on um on ladders or something like that or even if you're on a boat I mean you could put it on the rails of a boat couldn't you some boats have those sorts of rails yeah for when you're at a marina yeah now we've actually got one of these on the back of our house so they have quite a multi-purpose device so if that's the uh, Patriot DB is it? we've got the Patriot DB in, in our particular case yeah but you could use any of them couldn't you really or if you've got a garden pub you could use this if you wanted to yeah uh, the, this Patriot USB is only for picking signals up yeah so yeah you can you can use it if, if you've got wi-fi nearby your house that you're wanting to pick up it doesn't have to just be so if you if you went with the kit option you can have the patriot on the outside patriot patriot that's I suppose that's the next question isn't it leave a note in the comments as to in what england you think. We say patriot. yeah well <laughs> i spent a lot of time in america in my youth so patriot anyway so if you've got a garden shed for instance or a garden pub and I know I keep harping on about this and I'm sure you can gather why, but so we, ha if you've got one on the outside of your garden pub and then you could go into the USB router inside and then distribute it for all your guests to watch. Or, or if you wanted, if you had Wi-Fi in there to Wi-Fi for telly or something, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're broadcasting the Wi-Fi out, you'd use the Patriot DB, yeah. which isn't part of this kit, but it no. can sort of be used with a separate thing. Yeah. And I think that goes through all of Sarah's questions. Yeah, she's just said this is not a permanently attached antenna, but you would attach it up when you park up, wouldn't you? So that's fine. So again, yeah. not, not don't leave it on for traveling. Um, no, well, interestingly, the, the question here is, is obviously is that you don't have to pay for 4G or 5G, but you may have to pay for Wi-Fi yeah, on the site. It depends on what the Wi-Fi that, offering is. Yeah, it depends <laughs> on the site. They might make you pay for it. Um, I think most of them are probably going free Wi-Fi these days um, just to connect to Holiday Park Wi-Fi. So that's it. So thank you very much, Daniel. So that's a, a, another useful warble of an afternoon, just telling people what we think. Yep. Obviously, we've never fitted the 4G antennas to our motorhome because we supply them, but it's, yeah, but we've never fitted them, have we? But, you know, no. but we can have a good guess at what's supposed yeah, to be done. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's it for this time. If you've got any queries or questions, pop us an email across or pop a note in the comments below and we'll endeavour to answer those. Um, and then we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye.
thank you for watching or thank you for listening whichever you chose to do uh, if you normally listen by all means come and have a look at us over on youtube if you want to scare yourselves if not just find us wherever you get your normal podcast from thank you very much see you next month